Hello, mech fans. This is Duncan Fisher. Hold on firmly to your mana potions, fireballs, and familiars, because you are tuning in to your regularly scheduled episode of the First Circuit Podcast. Hello and welcome to the First Circuit, episode number 95,000. Today we have two very big topics to talk about. The MechWarrior 5 is going epic exclusive, as we predicted last week. And the Battletech Kickstarter, the tabletop Battletech Kickstarter. Today we have three of our regular hosts, me, Viter. We also have Ian. Hello. And old Bob. Hello. All right, let's get into it. Epic Store exclusives. Ian, do you want to do you want to do a summary? Yes. So I was part of the AMA Live and I did a couple of notes. So I'm quickly going to summarize what we know at this point in time. And by this point in time, I do mean Saturday last week at the time you're hearing this. Yeah. So MacWare 5 is officially Epic exclusive for one year. The release date has been pushed back to December with the beta starting in November. Everyone who had pre-ordered MacWare 5 over the official site can get a complete and full refund while simultaneously keeping all of the MacWare online content, which is very generous of PGI, especially since they're covering the refunds out of their own pockets rather than from the Epic money. The deal to go Epic's exclusive was finalized in April, even before the pre-order ended. So we don't know why we didn't get any notice of this sooner. Transparency. What we do know is that it took since and uh, it took until last week, roughly, to uh, basically uh, for everyone to put their signatures under the deal. So it was officially signed last week. The website update, which started off the speculations, was an accident. Was did indeed confirm that it was an accident, and he also confirmed that he would not have made the announcement this soon if the update didn't happen. So they would have waited even longer for it to announce. For some numbers, we finally got some numbers. Um, there were 20,000 pre-orders. At the time of the first AMA, so five hours after the official announcement, 700 of which were already completely refunded, and a lot more of refunds were pending. The sales goal for Mac 5 on Epic Store now is going to be 1 million pieces. So PGI does want to sell a lot of copies. We do know that the Epic deal includes the usual 88 12 split, so Epic is only getting 12% of all sales money, and those 12% already include the 5% cut for the Unreal Engine, which would usually go on top of their cut. Was did, however, avoid answering any questions about the upfront cash that Epic usually gives out for the exclusive titles. We know the average is about 2 million, but um, we don't know how much PGI got in this particular case. He said something about performance. Um, oh, on, on the note? on the cash yeah. front, uh, of course, yeah. they are moving the timeline down a month, and he said they could do that because you know of the going epic exclusive. So yeah, they're able to develop the game more <laughs> with that money, presumably. Okay, yeah. So we definitely know they did get some money, but we don't know how much. We got performance numbers. Was personal laptop with a 1070 Ti and an i7 is gaming uh, is playing the game at 60 fps. So performance should be pretty decent on most machines. When it comes out, crossplay between platforms. So after the year ends and we may or may not get the game on Steam and anything else, there are currently no plans to enable crossplay. They are not releasing on multiple platforms at the same time because Epic said so. Modding support at earliest will come 2020, at least over the Epic Store. PGI is still going to release all of the modding tools but the integration into the Epic Store is not going to come anytime soon. And was specifically said, I believe that was on Twitter, that he's not going to confirm Steam after the one year because it's too far in the future. So we don't even know for certain whether the game is going to come to Steam at all, which is sad. However, on the good side, apparently we will only need the Epic Launcher to download the game once. After that, we can run it without the launcher. And the co-op can be done by directly connecting to your friend's IP address. So you don't need the launcher for that. So only for downloading and updating. And the final thing, um, he was still confirmed that the Epic deal allowed them to budget for marketing. 
and they are now starting to figure out what to do with the budgeting market. So hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to see some marketing for Mac OS 5 very soon. The budget also allowed them to do more features like uh, language support, I think, for, what was it, German yes. and Russian? Yeah. Yes. And I think they also uh, hired, I think, two new designers for, like, lighting or something like that, too. Yeah. He also explained a bit more about the beta. It won't be um, the actual campaign. It will be, do you remember what it was called? It's, it's sort of like a... I think it's called like instant, instant action. action. Yeah. Instant action, yeah. which... Um, I had, have we ever heard of instant action before? You know, we used to have all of bits and pieces. Yeah, skirmish and well, we didn't tell about it in Macro 5, but everyone assumed that it would be there since Rusty on all of the previous Macro titles. All right. Yeah, so Epic exclusive. Uh, naturally, at least I think the big thing is the uh, community backlash on this, like with most epic exclusive uh titles yep. they did of course uh you know one source of complaint would be of course um they said it would be on you know they could give steam keys or other digital platforms but nope it's only epic exclusive you don't want if you don't like epic or their game store or having to only go to that platform you're plum out of luck but yeah as ian said earlier they are giving very favorable refund terms well, well, yeah. Basically, you get all the free stuff you got from uh, um, from the pre-order, which is like uh, some of them was like thirty thousand MC max and all that kind of stuff too. Yeah, and that could be doubled, like for founders or whatnot. Yeah, yes. uh, Ian got a whole bunch yes. of MC. Um, yes. <laughs> Still yes. sent them. Yeah, because the pre-order, um, the majority of the value was actually in the stuff you're getting in Macquarie Online. Yeah. And they aren't trying to, you know, take away your Marauder 2s or uh, your MechWarrior 5 bonus mechs or MC. Like, that's just such a, a web to untangle, and that would be so cruel and capricious that it's just really not worth their time, I think. But it does give an interesting value proposition. If you uh, pay, particularly for the more expensive packages, if you refund it and buy the game later, you'll actually get that money back, mm -hmm. you know, the extra money on top. We don't know, though, of course what it will sell at retail or you know on the epic game store but we could say you know it's probably like the minimum level of that 50 dollars or 40 dollars or so you know it's not going to be crazy it's not going to be 120 dollars. so you're probably <laughs> like with the ultimate pack so you can actually save so to speak 70 to 30 dollars and still keep the bonus stuff we will miss out though of course on the beta and you have to refund it before the beta if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah, yeah it's like refunds are in. currently open until september 1st mm. uh so yeah you have to refund roughly before the beta you uh miss out on the few bonuses that were part of MacWarrior 5 so i think like they were doing the soundtrack in-game manual um and the skin or something like that yeah, yeah the paint jobs you, you'll miss out on those i mean the... yeah yeah i mean you'll miss out on a couple of things but but i think uh if you do um if you don't care about the uh the beta you're just gonna you know if, if you're gonna pick up normally like when it does come out december 10th and you don't really care about the beta and just want to go play it like once it does come out i mean the best deal for you is just go ahead and refund it and then go ahead and uh you know get the stuff that you know was given out for free and then grab it once it does come out because you'll save a lot a lot of money yeah um i personally am not a big fan of like epic doing these exclusives so yeah i just like to have uh, games on like your know, good old games or steam yeah i have a lot of games on steam and gog is much more you know it, it, it follows the ethos of pc gaming mm. rather than you know sort of doing exclusives uh so i'm not sure i'd be too yeah you know, if you really dislike the epic game store uh refunding it and buying it later on the Epic Game Store might not be it. Like, I think a lot of people have said they want to wait a year because it's for a year worth of exclusivity. Though, yeah. who knows if, you know, how things will actually pan out, if even PGI will exist a year later. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Um, so you, you can't rely on that. But others, of course, have been, uh, you know, playing the Captain Pugwash theme song for some reason. Which? <laughs> the Captain Pugwash. Never heard that one. It's a fictional pirate. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I think it's more British. Uh, but uh, yeah, first off, at least, um, I would discuss uh, it from a business angle. Like, uh, why did Rust make this decision? Why did he go Epic exclusive? Because, you know, uh, 
making it exclusive is not very consumer friendly. It's going to have this huge backlash. You're going to really piss off your community, and PGI does not need to piss off the community more yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this whole topic was actually fairly interesting during the AMA because, according to us, it was not a financial decision. He multiple times said that he did it because he truly believes, and I do believe that he believes what he's saying. He believes that the game is going to be more successful on the Epic Store, mostly because um, of discoverability, which apparently on the Epic Store is higher than on Steam, which makes sense because Epic has like 10 games compared to Steam's. 20,000, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I don't understand that distinction fully, though, in the sense like, okay, the game will be more successful on Epic because he believes it will be discovered more, he'll sell more copies, which in the end means he makes more money which means there's a financial incentive you know like you want to sell the game well of course the money infusion from uh, epic means they can you know take longer to development or they can spend more on marketing etc cetera, etc cetera. so he uh at least the way he presents it yeah i think the making a better game angle is at least certainly true but the uh discoverability that is part of the financial uh the financials I mean, I can agree with you, though. Basically, uh, with with marketing, you want to have it be to the bigger audiences. And let's face it, though. I mean, Epic has a huge freaking you know, audience, and they're making money. They're making money. And the whole reason why you get in business is to make money, period. And Russ saw that big wad of cash. He basically saw that, you know, it, it could be more discoverable. I mean, like on Steam, there's a lot of games that, like, if I really search, I go... Wow, I never knew that game was on Steam. And then because it, you know you have to really search through their database of billions and billions of different games to go find the one game. With like you know, just like you said, there's like 10, 20 games on 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 you know on the Epic, and so the the discoverability would be a lot more on Epic than it would it be on Steam. And I get that. And plus, you know, business is business. That's you know that's how it works. Yeah. So Regarding there's the... a lot to crack down yeah. into it. Obviously, I think Steam is a much bigger platform in terms of total users, is my guess. Like, Steam is huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Epic, of course, isn't a small fry either. It, um, particularly with, you know, having to launch games like Fortnite and what through it, it has a large user base as well. Not as large, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, as you alluded to, Bob, uh, there's... Um, just a profusion of games on Steam, and it, uh, discoverability is indeed a lot harder to maintain yeah. on Steam than Epic. And at least with Epic often offering money or lots of incentives for companies to become exclusive, Epic, the storefront themselves, have an incentive to reward those who become exclusives on their platform. Whereas you know, Steam is a much more laissez-faire company, just yeah. <laughs> uh, you have a game? Cool, we'll throw it up there. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, whilst there is lots and lots and lots of titles, um, yeah, the big titles on both platforms generally get the front billing, I think, because those, of course, are the uh, flashy ones that sell for the most money and are the most well-polished. Um, but uh, MacWire 5 is sort of, you know, it, it, with its development time and budget, I think it's... Uh, it's not triple A, it's a B title or whatever you call it, but uh, really? yeah, it, it's, right. I'm, I'm just saying, I think it is, um, it's been in, it's in develop for a while. It, it's not a tiny two man studio is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's been in <laughs> development for four years. So yeah, I mean, so... especially with the includings of ray tracing and the presentation at the NVIDIA panel, I would consider it triple A at this point. Maybe double A, not triple A though. Double A or so. Well, yeah. It's okay. it's it's not a Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yeah, Epic Game Store is a smaller audience, but you're going to have much more time on that storefront and whatnot. Um, there's also the obvious factor that of uh, how much of a cut is taken from mm -hmm. each purchase. So uh, Steam takes a thirty percent cut, and Epic because they're using Epic's engine take also a 5% cut. So 35% if they were selling on Steam. And I'm not sure of the cut on GOG, but there's a GOG is a much smaller platform. So on average, at least, you know, you're, you're comparing the two big giants. That's where the majority of your sales are going on. 35% um, on Steam and just 12% on Epic Games Store, which means you're getting you know, almost three times the money taken away when you sell on Steam. 
and Steam has the issues with discoverability and this, that, and the other. So, um, as ever, it's uh, we don't have all the facts and figures, all the data, and it's all just sort of guesswork how it will actually pan out. But there is certainly a lot of reasons to say that um, Russ uh, had a lot of incentive to become Epic exclusive. Now, one question I think people brought up, and I think it should be addressed, is why not just put it on all platforms? Well, um, particularly with a smaller studio, if you're not full AAA, if you're not Call of Duty, um, Russ and others, I think, have had kind of the issue that Epic, are uh, the terms they give to, to smaller studios are, you are either uh, exclusive with us or you don't appear on our platform. And that is sort of the rub that Russ, he doesn't have an option of just, you know, going Epic exclusive or all platforms or just Steam. He has just two big red buttons in front of him. One, he can press and he goes Epic Store exclusive or the other button, he goes Steam, GOG, all the other platforms. Um, and at least, you know, Epic is offering really good terms. They give you cash up front. They are going to uh, market it. Presumably market it. It's um, a lot less a crowded storefront. And they take a third, roughly a third of the cut in total. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for, for one thing, that's going to really help, like, Microsoft 5 as a marketing per se. Because, I mean, and let's face it, the market has been piss poor for the last, I mean, it's been always piss poor. And and Epic, you know, actually has marketing consultants. They know what they're doing. They can market the game a, a lot better. Even guerrilla marketing, or even actually, you know, just normal marketing like concepts like TV, radio, well, not radio, but like you know, TV and like you know, well, YouTube ads and stuff like if, that. If I may interject, Bob, here's a really interesting question though. We don't know whether Epic is going to market the game or whether they just provide the money for PGI to market. The oh, game. that's a good point. Actually. That's a really big distinction. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, because, PGI because PGI will mess it up. Yeah, if PGI markets the game. It's probably not going to be too great. Yeah. If yeah. Epic markets the game, I've got a lot higher hopes. Yeah, we don't know all the terms of this that, and the other. Um, Epic will do what it can on its platform, but I don't think they become like a publisher or anything like yeah. that. And we haven't heard any details. Well, because, you know, that's a, a few months down the line. We haven't heard details of them hiring a company to do marketing for them or something like that. But uh, you know, if they have the cash, I think hiring a company would be a lot better than trying to rely on yes, the talent absolutely. inside the studio. Yeah. Which has a bad track record. Yeah. yeah just, just go ahead and. Go to the guys at Paradox. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. really dis I'm not a huge fan at all of Epic Store, you know, doing this exclusivity thing, though it is their way to you know, they want a cut of the market and this is the way to do so. Um I so Epic makes sense for you know for what they're trying to do. They have a whole bunch of cash, you know, they have plenty to spend on getting exclusive like this to make people go to their storefront. And from PGI's perspective, Russ, he's sitting in front of those two buttons, and the Epic exclusive button is a very good terms. Whereas the Steam terms are just so eh. <laughs> so can I blame PGI for making this decision? No, it makes complete financial sense you can make a better game it'll be much better marketed and in the end you'll get you know hopefully at least you'll get just about the enough, same amount of sales and you'll have a much better cut yeah so uh yeah the game will certainly uh it'll be much better polished when it comes out it'll have marketing it it all makes sense it's um i can't blame the decision what i can blame is a epic for doing the exclusive i just yeah i i give them a disapproving finger waggle i do not like <laughs> uh, so uh, finger waggle <laughs> <laughs> yes you bad well, bad uh, Bob, company Bobby, Bobby has to be careful not to spill this tea so okay. it's only a finger <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing is, of course, um, PGI and how they handle this hot potato. Like, um, I think, as we said, it was kind of accidental the changing of the Q and A, the FAQ, and that meant that Russell sort of had to, you know, spill the beans a lot sooner than they wanted to. But um, I, I just think. It goes down to the fact that uh, this, you know, um, they change the FAQ, where it's bubbling on for a while. They delay the AMA, and then finally, you know, it just comes out. Yeah, okay, we fucked up again. <laughs> well, like, what were they gonna do? Like, you know, basically, well, yes. well, like we, 
we we screwed up on this. We weren't going to tell you until the into that day when it comes out. By the way, you don't get it on Steam. It's on now on Epic. I mean, that's that's kind of deceitful too. I mean, from from Russ, it's it's mm-hmm. amazing that to transparency and yeah. they knew about this or they talked about it like in April, but they wanted the pre-orders to go get the money until quote they they finance the deal. That's what a lot of people are pissed off about, and you know, like I'm mad about that too. Don't get me wrong. But I like yeah. the game a little bit better to you know bypass a little bit of this and you know hey if someone picks up the IP yeah you know, you know someone picks up the IP like later on I'll be happy but right now Russ has it and so I'm gonna go play my quarter five but you know it pisses a lot of people off and it pisses me off too that he waited and waited and has no transparency and then the only reason why we we found out was because of a mess up from the engineers changing the fact <laughs> yes. yeah and besides besides the um um transparency in what i just mentioned there's also the fact of reliability at this point i do not believe was anything he says anymore yeah so what he, what he said about uh needing the epic launcher only to download i'm gonna take that with a giant grain of salt because i do not trust Russ anymore at this point i mean like May- oh, sorry go ahead for, for example but here's, here's the thing he said in the ama that he wouldn't have announced it the way he did meaning he would have announced it later the refunds are only valid until September 1st. So when would he have announced the fact that we should refund? Only yeah. two weeks before the deadline? Yeah. See, you know, you know that... Well, you know. Why hold on to this uh, news? Why keep us under the dark? Like, just um, as ever with PGI, if they talk more to the community, make it more of a continual story, you ease people into the fact that this stuff kind of thing will happen. You get more of a, you know, th- there's yeah. more of a back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just just look at the way Battletech, uh, HBS handled their Kickstarter. They had issues. They had a lot of issues. They had to delay the game multiple times. But they talked about it. They yeah. announced it in time. They told us what was going on. So, of course, people got temporarily mad, but not that mad. If, it, like, if they um, had just announced in April, not like, okay, we're going exclusive, but whether we are thinking about going Epic exclusive, feel free to tell us your opinion about it. And it's not finalized yet. Something like that. That's all yeah. I would have asked for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's very much like uh, with Battletech. Yeah. They did updates just talking about, hey, guys, I know we're sort of translating the tabletop to a computer game, but we don't think the tabletop is too good as a video game. And we've been experimenting. And, you know, here are the mechanics we came up with, like an initiative system, et cetera, et cetera. They, you know, they talk to the community about the changes they're making. Whereas with MechWarrior 5, you know, they change it from always just one, you know, one player. Uh, going against the the whole world to you always sport you know dropping with an entire lance. <laughs> we heard nothing about that until you know I think what Metcon, where you're actually driving around with three lance mates. Yeah, it's just there's no communication. And um, you know, to sort of make an analogy, I think my girlfriend made it sort of the the news of you know M- uh, Mechor Online being put on co- uh, put on ice and then Mechor Five. Um, becoming epic exclusive it's kind of like pgi shot themselves in the foot and then put the foot in salt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and um the thing is like if they communicated more sure they're shooting themselves in the foot but it wasn't just sort of out of nowhere blam whoa they shot themselves in the foot what the hell's wrong with you and then <laughs> dunk what the hell man <laughs> where is if you take more time to communicate, it's like, okay, guys, I, um, things aren't going too well here, so I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. And you're like, oh, well, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you got some, you feel prepared for it. And then they can bandage it up and say, okay, guys, we're, we're going to go Epic exclusive. We need the money. <laughs> and, and then they dive it, you know, plunge it into salt. And people would still dislike it, but it wouldn't be so bad. And the other thing is, you know, Russ is talking about, we're going to deliver a much greater game to you. Well, yeah, I would like to hear about this great game you're developing. Oh, yeah. Screenshots, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, basically. If I knew shooting yourself in the foot and diving it into salt was for something, like I knew what you were doing it for, I could, you know, respect that. But I just, you know, I, it, it's it's for a mysterious box. What's in the box? I don't know. Yeah, and by the here's another funny thing that happened um, when they put out the announcement, mm-hmm. and the giant backlash started going out mostly on Twitter. The mm-hmm. first thing they did is to put out some more screenshots on the AMA Discord. Yeah. Yep. I think that well, that was kind of lovely. Like, okay, we know you're pissed. Here, take a couple of screenshots. Please don't refund. I mean, where did they, <laughs> where did they, where did they go to marketing school or PR school, man? They, they just That's like the dumbest thing you can ever do. The only people who actually bought the game 
I, God, just, it, it upsets me so much that they don't have a simple concept of marketing, period, or PR management. I, you know, it, it's like simple things that they can do that would be just beyond thing, like being freaking talk about the damn game. Talk about, oh, by the way, April, yeah, we, we're, we're thinking about going to Epic, but we're not too sure. What do you guys think? And then even then, people know about that. And then you go, oh, by the way, like in uh, like now, we decided to go with Epic instead of Steam, where we gave all our stuff back. At least we knew about it. Instead, I, I get a tweet yeah. from Lars going, by the way, they're Epic. I'm like, what? And so, like, <laughs> it's like, what? You know, basically, it was like out of the blue. I had no clue what's going on. I, I, I don't even know what the damn game is about. I have no, I just, ah, there's like so much. I don't know about this damn game, <laughs> but I played in MechCon. I just played the like instant action type thing, but I want to know more and, and do what Star Wars did. Star Wars did for two freaking years of just advancing. Here's here's the here's the alien dude on this planet. Here's the starship you might be piloting. Here's this. You know, do simple things. Simple, simple, simple things. PJ does. But, Bob, but they, they they did give us simple things. They showed us off the explosions. Yeah, they showed off a couple explosions. <laughs> they showed off a couple screenshots, but they don't actually show the damn game or actually talk about it. Except for the AMA where people are, are saying, What's a bullet velocity on the moon on, on indoor? It's like I don't freaking know. That's the question I think it Today we shall discuss the philosophy of our UI design. Exactly. You know, basically, <laughs> you know, basically talk about, you know, what mechs are. I don't even know what mechs in there. Like all I know is like fifty mechs according to the website. You know, type thing. It's like, get off your damn ass and, you know, talk to people. Talk. You know, they're not going to, well, they might bite now because you fucked up so bad. But the whole thing is talk to people and tell them what's going on. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, the, 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 yeah, it's very much that the PGI keep doing big, huge PR blunders and there isn't that much. Um, they're giving us that really makes us look forward to the game that they are making or the game that they already have out. And I mean, with Epic exclusivity, the deal is signed, the, the deed is done. Um, if you want, if you bought the bigger packages, refund it and you get a bunch of cash yeah. uh, and you could buy the game later. Um, if you don't like Epic, you could refund the game and they've given you good terms. They were prepared for this and I will applaud, I will applaud them for their refund policy. Oh, yeah. They were, yes. they knew this was going to yes. happen. And yes. instead of people rumoring about the FAQ changing, you know, Russ comes out in the AMA and just, he's quite honest with the numbers, like, you know, 20,000 copies sold 700 so refunded who knows how many in total will be refunded in the end just triple the number uh, you know 2100 you know it's roughly 10 percent will refund <laughs> I, I don't know how good that is an estimate but um yeah yeah it's it's really uh, hard for us to estimate i did put out a a vote on twitter to find out between the people i know and then mm -hmm. i also ask around on the the various discords i'm on and like my grasp would be roughly 50 percent Mm -hmm. refunding mm -hmm. but again yeah. that's just the people i talk to of course there's a vocal minority uh, a non-vocal yep. majority yeah and we don't have those numbers but out of the people and, i know it's roughly 50 percent and at least if we're talking as a business um let's say he's he's planning or aiming for one million copies sold if he loses twenty thousand sales all of the pre-orders were refunded that's a drop in the ocean compared yeah. to a million oh yeah you know, especially at twelve, at what like twelve percent, right? You know, especially at twelve percent. That's um, he's gonna make the pre this. The pre-orders are, I think, sh cash straight to PGI's pocket, though. So, th you know, other than bank transactions, they keep the majority of the money. So they instead of getting eighty, mm. you know, uh, eighty-eight percent or whatever. Not yeah, quite, like, um, because the way the pre-order works is you're gonna get a key for the Epic Store. Uh, so mm. at that point, PGI is basically buying, let's say, twenty thousand keys from Epic. And yeah. at that point, they're still giving the yeah. cut away. Uh, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah okay. But, yeah. But they're only giving away the cut for the fifty or sixty dollars the game's going to cost, rather than the hundred and twenty for the whole package. Yep. I mean, like <laughs> we're talking forty nine million if the game is at forty nine, you know, forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, then they're cut and everything. I mean, he's he's if it sells a million copies, it's hand over fist a business deal that you know he could. Do mm -hmm. anything one he could, he could buy his own buy his own island yeah you know, type thing that's that's another thing though the one million I think that's really optimistic oh yeah oh pfft. yes yeah Even that's way optimistic it, when he talked he, about yeah he, he talked about that 
he based those numbers on the numbers Epic showed him, how other games saw it compared to their projected goals. And mm -hmm. that's another thing I would ask the audience to read up on themselves because there are rumors that Epic is falsifying numbers. Well, yeah. But again, I don't... When, so when he talked about his discoverability, what names did he drop? He dropped, was it um, <laughs> Metro Exodus, Borderlands, you know, the biggest titles, the triple A's. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, like Borderlands 3, that's a long and successful franchise. Metro, same. It's got a huge, long cult following. Lots of uh, community love for it. But um, what what about a Mech Warrior 5? What about a PGI it's level game? My, my guess is going to go along the lines of Phoenix Point, which is also a small Epic exclusive. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to be fair, even that was on the front side for a fair bit. It's still on the front side if you scroll down like one page so to say well yeah well plus also epic is like a used car salesman so they'll tell you some numbers because they want you on their store so a used car a used car salesman wants to actually sell you a car so they'll tell you anything you know oh yeah you know this car can fly too it's like really okay fly you know and they'll tell you anything they want to go ahead and get your and, and get you either to buy the you know be, to be inside the store so all oh, rush you can sell a million units no problem and you know this is what Fortnite did. Like, well, okay, but you know you're a triple, you're a double A title, not a triple A. It's a bit more of a symbiotic relationship, though, since yeah. obviously, um, if there's a lot of horror stories about uh, people going exclusive with them, then the whole point of gra grabbing exclusives of trying to sell these games, make them successful, um, goes down the drain. So. They have a vested interest. Like the thing is, um, going exclusives, doing all these really good terms, is um, not as compared. They're not getting as much money out of it as Steam, you know, relatively speaking. But they're putting down their cash so that later on they have a bigger slice of a very important or big market. So to that end, yeah, they, they're they're going to try and trick people into being. Um, into dealing with them yeah but they want to give them good terms they want to give them security they want to make sure they succeed because it's at, because they're it's gonna make money opening too. it's it's a new car lot that he's he's opening up yeah so you want to make sure that your service is really good to start with because you get a good reputation you get a good uh you know customer base but if you you open a new car lot and you are a really dodgy car you know used car salesman uh, no one's going to trust you. You're going to <laughs> just go out of business, or it's it's not going to be worth your time. I got an idea for the uh, for the thumbnail now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, perhaps we should uh, wrap up just a bit talking about the community, uh, this and the other. Um, yeah, I think it had the regular backlash, like all the uh, yeah. a whole bunch of other exclusives. I think there's certainly some who have taken their rhetoric very far. Oh yeah, lots of others who played it mm -hmm. very colorfully. Um, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I personally am very tempted to refund. I got the basic package, but I just do not. Re I do not at all like, like uh, Epic's uh, business practices. And so for me, I'm prepared to wait an extra year miss the beta, miss the game for a year and buy it elsewhere, mm -hmm. like on GOG. Um, but <laughs> that doesn't mean, you know, I'm flying off the handle saying this, that, and the other, and it's, um, it, 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 it's more about the business practices more so than the storefront. Like, uh, it, it, yes. it, back in the past, when you had to uh, get an exclusive title like Halo, you had to buy an Xbox, like an Xbox mm -hmm. One or Xbox 360, <laughs> yeah. or Xbox Original, or uh, One as well. Uh, <laughs> you had to get get an Xbox, you know, had to pay a few hundred dollars uh, to get one of those. But uh, Epic Game Store, you download a launcher. Yeah, that it's free. It it it's. Um, you have to make an account as well, and there are there are issues with the game store, Epic Game Store. It's not as developed as Steam. There has been security for concerns, this, that, and the other. There are legitimate complaints, but for me, the biggest deal breaker is just simply their business practices, and I do not support. I I got away from consoles because I disliked the practice of having exclusives. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if if a a company on the PC platform is doing exclusives, I'm just not going to deal with that platform. Or at least at the moment, that that's kind of what I do, and it's the same kind of with loot boxes. I try and avoid generally platforms and games that engage in these practices, just because I want to, you know, I want to vote, you know, uh, not democratically but capitalistically with. 
<laughs> however little that may be. It's it's really hard for me. Like especially since I bought the main package and I could save sixty bucks if I just waived my mm -hmm. data access. But then again, I've waited so long for this game, and I'm so excited for this game. I think I'm gonna stick with it. But I really do not like Epic, and I will, I will nail Waston on his promise. I will download the Epic Store once. I will download the game, and then I'll play the game. And if necessary, I'll update the game. But I'm not gonna launch it for the Epic Store. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm kind of like in the same boat though. Like, uh, I don't like I don't like the Epic Store myself, the business practices, like everything else, and um, you know, knowing that we could actually just download it and then run it off of that, then I could get your IP address, like Ian, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, get your IP address and go, and, you know, like we can play together. Uh, I'm fine with that. You know, basically, I'm fine. With that. I just want to play the damn game. You know, you know basically, I played at MetCon. I thought it was amazing, and I just want to play the damn game. And, and basically, I waited so long for this. And for me to go, you know, like Steam is 100% better better than Epic. I, I mean, I love Steam. Steam is awesome. Um, it has its own security like concerns, just like Epic does. Every launcher does. I mean, hell, man, go on Facebook. You know, go on uh, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter. I mean, er everyone has their own like security uh, thing. So it's not it's not just Epic Store is the only store that has problems, but every every place does. But I just want to play the damn game. I want to have fun with it. Now for the beta uh, thing. I got the middle package. I mean, I could probably save, you know, 15, 20 bucks, but I want the beta. I, I want the access. The only deal breaker for me for the beta is uh, in the in the FAQ, it does say, like, we're not sure if you can go ahead and uh, use the footage or go stream it. That's going to be a deal breaker, like, for me, because if, if it's like that, um, I don't want to have to drop 20 different videos on, on day one when it first comes out. I want to be able to you know stream the game or make videos about it or you know do that kind of stuff because I love BattleTech, man. I you know that's how I am, and you, you know everyone else who goes ballistic and you know like you know, um, you know it's it's a MechWarrior community, man. You know basically we're good people. Yeah. Everyone's really nice. You know you know we're supposed to be nice and it just just fractured people into their own little mm -hmm. camps with little spears like like uh, Lord of the Flies, you know type thing. So yes, I, I in, in the end I, in the end. Um, PGI is a business and their business is selling to us fun games. You believe in the product, uh, the inconvenience of the Epic Game Store, the bad practices of the Epic Game Store, you can overlook that if you really just want to sit down and enjoy the product. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unless you want to uh, become a privateer. Um, <laughs> Arr! <laughs> uh, but from PGI's perspective, I think you know they always had issues with PR, with selling their games to get people in, hyped about their games. And I think that is just really what they need to work on. Like, moving forward, the deal is done. Sell us on your game. Make us uh, want to keep our uh, pre-orders. Yeah. But uh, as it is, yeah, all they did was release a bunch of screenshots. Like, that, that doesn't cut it. I want to hear, I want uh, PGI to put something out. So this is what the game is like. This is our dream for the game because that is what they need. That is what they always have needed is to sell their product. And that's all that they can do at this point. They have signed the deal. They are exclusive. And, you know, I, I dislike the lies. I dislike the business practice. Yeah. I dislike uh, how they did it all. But all they could do now is make a good game and sell the community and the wider public on that game. Well, also too, it's like you know, PGI has the license. They got you know, they got the game, and so we're stuck with it, you know, until another company picks up the IP. But like I, I keep on saying to everyone that you know, if 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 another company looks at what's happening now, and if you know, PGI, don't get me wrong, they 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 effed up like immensely. If another company looks and goes and looks at the back history, they're like, "Well, I'm not touching this game with a 10 foot pole. Screw that." And so, you know, everyone loses. You know, everyone loses like what is happening. That's why I'm not like you know on the bandwagon for a kill PGI and you know destroy the company. It's it's more of just um, I want the game. I want the franchise to go ahead and you know, expand into online avenues than to just die for another 17 years. All their decisions make perfect sense in my mind. That uh, if you're running a business, this is the oh, things yeah. I yeah. would do the biggest difference is just simply how much i talk with the community or mm -hmm. uh, my community people are involved in the community because it's just a matter of uh, dampening the blow not letting the pressure build up and release <laughs> you don't shoot yourself in the foot and then dump it in yeah. salt you okay. dress the wound you let people know it's coming okay so i i think we talked enough about the uh the, yeah. the epic mess up and uh let's go ahead and and go with the favorite part
of the Kickstarter. Woohoo! I'm so excited. Oh god, I'm so excited about this too. <laughs> okay, I'll let you right, take summary it. Person. The summary yes, person. Do the summary. Summary time. Yay. All right. On on July 17th, um, Catalyst Games put on a new Kickstarter for the BattleTech Land Invasion, an all new box set with with a crap ton of content and a crap ton of add-ons you can buy in addition to the base box game. I, I, it's there's so much there. I'm gonna have a hard time summarizing it for you, but I'm gonna try my best. First of initial responses, the thing was a giant success. Oh yeah. The original goal of, uh, let me actually mouse over it because it's a new one for me, of roughly thirty thousand US dollar was founded in seven minutes, and that includes the two minutes the Kickstarter was posted early. So. People technically didn't know that it was live and they still started funding it, which is, in my opinion, kind of insane. It took one hour to break all of the initial stretch goals and reach the 200k. And currently it's at over 1 million, so less than a week to reach $1 million for Kickstarter, which for a tabletop Kickstarter is absolutely insane. Yeah, actually, most, right. most, most, Kickstarter, most game companies are now doing Kickstarter uh, projects. I, I, I know... Um... A lot of different companies are actually doing that now, and that's the way to go now. Yes, it certainly is. For, for new games that are potentially risky, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is helping. Uh, the gist I've got of it is it's um, sort of uh, looking for the community to help fund them, uh, you know, developing various cards and you know, mechs and getting them actually started in the production runs. Of course, if you fund at different levels, I think they're giving away diff uh, packs and this, that, and the other. But uh, this is sort of, in a way, a funny uh, way to invest in it because it's not like a video game where, you know, you reach a certain tier, you get the game. There's, uh, you know, the, the bigger the um, the total funding, the more separate different uh, packs of mechs they're actually mm -hmm. going to produce. The more map uh, mechs they're going to uh, maps and cards and things they're going to produce. The more <laughs> dice they're going to produce. Challenge this, that, and the other, yeah. like. Yeah, if you look at the uh, extension, um, extension, it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Just <laughs> it takes a while to scroll yes. through all the things that they have planned. As long as the community gives them enough money to develop all of these resources, well, like they're and they're probably like in the um, in the uh, Chaos Game Labs going, "Hey guys, we just hit uh, a 1.2 million. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Uh, what do you guys want to do, man? Like, what can we do?" <laughs> <laughs> and what else can we do for yeah. 1.5 million? I don't know. Can you drop something really cool? Okay, cool. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the latest stretch goals have been certainly less planned out, but at the same time, that's good for the community because they're listening to community feedback and adding stretch goals the community actually wants, like packs that are designed by the community or certain things that improve certain backing levels. Yeah. And it's yeah. definitely cool uh, to see. What I'll say about these backing goals is um, uh, it's it, uh, it's not always the best sign when you're scrolling through pages upon pages of uh, backing goals because um, it, 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 you get an issue of feature creep where yes. um, it, it, you can say, oh yeah, for just five or ten thousand, we'll be able to add this thing. But it's in real life, it's not always that simple. There's always hiccup, hiccups and delays. And if anything gets delayed, that moves your entire budget along and you know all of these things a bit like you know with uh mech warrior 5 uh, uh faq mm -hmm. it's just them trying to answer questions but when they say, when they answer the question you can have steam keys people expect steam keys when you have a kickstarter and you say you will get uh you know a lance of inner sphere mechs you know assault mechs or whatever uh you yeah, know that will come out people expect that to come out because you know at least in this kind of format it's much more um you uh, the the mindset of people behind it is usually you know if you go to a mcdonald's and order a burger you aren't asking for the chance of getting a burger you want a burger that's the deal <laughs> now like if i'm get yeah basically get your drift now like i i i'm wondering though like where are they getting the product from um most of the time game companies are actually purchasing from china i'm like you know when they looked into it um i mean about 90 percent of the companies do purchase from china period like uh parts uh, uh book uh, books and everything else and purchasing a bunch of stuff from there now uh china does have a reputation of like oh it got delayed or this happened or this happened type thing so you know where they're getting their product from because i know they had problems before 
you know, about getting yeah, box sets. We know that yeah, before. they took we so know. long with the box sets. Yeah, yeah, we know the pre uh, the previous Kickstarter they did was indeed from China, and it did indeed get delayed by a fair bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it's still going to be Asia somewhere, but we don't know for certain. Mm. Once but, you have, I mean, it's it's Kickstarter. Yeah. Delays yeah. are part of Kickstarters, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They and, shouldn't and the, be, but they are. The most difficult thing is usually, you know, getting a uh, supplier and you know, finding the time to actually have them produce all the stuff. Uh, adding more things to the production run isn't so hard, but um, yeah, th there's a whole bunch of things involved in each of these promises. Just even the cards is, you have to, you know, have someone design the artwork. You have to have someone. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, format the card, put it in the format. You have to have some, you know, the game designers work over it, make sure that it fits within the game mechanics of the game. It's a balanced card. And then finally, you've got to print it and ship it and distribute it. There's a lot to just adding a card to the game. Thankfully, though, you know, it will be part of doing a whole bunch of cards. So, you know, it, it's it, doing a single card is a lot of work, but um, it's only a little bit extra to do two cards at the same time. But all the same, you know, a lot of these stretch goals are just an extra 5,000. And sometimes um, it, it, it just every little extra bit you're adding makes it an extra little bit hard, much more so than just a single card might appear. Yeah. So that's my only misgiving sort of about their pr um, promising structure. Like uh, there's this great adrenaline rush where the community just gets goal after goal after goal after goal. And they add thing after thing after thing. And... You, you get feature creep and it just everything the the actual money needed for what they're promising explodes and at mm. some point you have to cut promises and that's really hard to you know to sell to people or to communicate yeah. one one thing to mention at this point um they are saying rough estimate for first delivery is going to be march 2020 but that's for the box set they already announced that they are going to ship in waves especially the later mac packs which are currently they just exist as names there are no models, no pictures, no nothing. Mm. They're going to come later. So absolutely be prepared for multiple shipping waves. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, beyond the business model, let's actually talk about the product. At least I'll give yes. my own service impressions, which is um, yeah, PGI, Battle, you know, uh, Battletech by, done by Hairbrain Schemes, and even Battletech the tabletop are outdoing you yeah. on marketing. That video <laughs> is stupendous. Like the art... It, I swear Great. tabletop is supposed to it's supposed to be done by five year olds, but <laughs> the art is fantastic it's fantastic. The Just look mechs, at those winners. Oh my god. Yeah. The, the uh the mech models they look great they don't look like they're made of uh they're made they, they're from made from pottery anymore. <laughs> it's great. I really love the presentation of this thing. They've done a lot of work to sell this thing to the community, and this is exactly yeah, you know, how you should do your marketing and work with uh, your community in a productive manner. Yeah, I, I don't know why they didn't go to like Hairbrain Schemes or or even uh, well, I, they're different companies, but I don't know why they didn't go to them saying, "Hey, we need help because we suck, and we need to go ahead and uh, do some better marketing to get our stuff out there." So, what do you guys think? And then, you know, like you know, we talked about this before, and just having Mitch with his natural charisma and natural um, um, spunk that he has. To go ahead and you know even him talking will will sell you uh, mechs you know oh check this out this has a gun oh you know we just sold three thousand uh, mechs you know type thing <laughs> you know that that's how he is you know just talking these guys will be uh, will make it so much better for PGI to use the marketing teams at that um, um, Cas Game Labs and let's and well, let's maybe focus okay, on sorry, the sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was just we, using we, that as a point of contrast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and let's just say um, Catalyst Games does have some course promotion going on. For example, HBS did make a video promoting the Kickstarter. They're doing cross promotion with MacWare 5, mm -hmm. which is a two edged sword at this point, but still, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Should we maybe talk about a bit about what you can actually get out of this Kickstarter? Okay. I'm going yeah, to sure. switch to the, uh, to the right. map thing. Okay, so obviously the main thing you're going to want out of this is the clan box set, which features a full star of clan miniatures, so five of them, and all the things you're going to need to get started with two noticeable exceptions, which are the base, the core rules for Total Warfare, which are the ones you got in the first box set for Inner So if you don't have any Battletech rules at all, it might be worth picking up the 
well, at this point, slightly older box set for the Inner Sphere. Or alternatively, the Alpha Strike Worlds, which are available from the Killers Game Store digitally. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, all you need to play the game is in a box, including five miniatures, including the Alpha Strike stuff, including the record sheets, all of it. So it's it's a really good box set, and I think it's really good value, especially compared to the first one, which I found kind of like Luster. What, the beginning uh, box set? Yeah, the game of Armored Combat yeah. for only two miniatures. Yeah, right. yeah, I was so, telling, yeah. Beyond, beyond the box set, you can buy a bunch of different stuff. I'm just going to quickly list a couple of those. You can buy dice, posters, um, a loot box, which I found kind of funny. You can buy a so-called salvage box, which is going to have one random Omni mech for $7. Um, I mean, <laughs> $7 for a single miniature is less value than you would get by just buying a lens pack. Yeah. But um, you do you if you want. What's it's a random thing? Those. Challenge coins, metal with email, which look really great. I'm going to get a couple of those. There are certain cards for pilots. There are a bunch of maps. There are cases for your dice, for maps. You can buy, of course, the mech packs for clan in a sphere. Comstar, which is really interesting because Comstar has six mechs rather than the mm -hmm. four for in a sphere and five for clan. You can buy a star of elementals. You can buy certain scenario settings. For example, the full campaign on Tukai is going to get a map pack that you can buy. You can, of course, buy the old box set. You can buy just the max from the old box set, which is what I'm going to be doing. Th this list continues it goes for about on. half an hour. Yeah, yeah. it goes but on and on. Two, two, two more things I want to say. You can get metal statues for the Tim Wolf and Warhammer, which are freaking sweet. Look at those pictures. I'm going to get both of those. And you can get a map, map scale fortress to us, uh, dropship. That's cool. Which is also That's really cool. sweet. Now, I know... Um... And... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Ooh, sorry, but I've got one last thing I really need to get out. You can design a canon character. So from a certain level on, or if you just buy it for $200, you can name a canon character, give him background, and design a custom art portrait for him. And he's going to be featured at some kind of novel or source book in the future. I'm going to call my canon character really cool. Shooty McShoot shoot, shoot, or Bangy McBang Bang. Mm. He's a gun on the, the end of a mech. I'm, I'm sure they got yeah. standards, but yeah, I would love to have the canon character, man. Old Bob in the Mech Warrior -like universe, but yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't have enough money for that one. Well, that, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's expensive, yeah. but it's so, really cool that they offer them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, what would you say are you know the best price points or you know, uh, starting points for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's this? that's a really hard question. I won't know the <laughs> summary of how much value you get per level, and of course, the higher you go, the better your value. Yeah, uh, um, like I think I, I think everyone likes the ninety-five dollar one though. Though basically, you get um, the challenge coins, you get uh, two mech, uh, two customized. So Choosable mech packs, two salvage boxes, the the TCG booster, the pilot boosters, the Xigna dice, the you get a whole mess of different things. I, I think that was the best deal that they were talking about. All right. Um, I mean, the $95 package is going to give you a value of $110 plus um, a bunch of fiction, mm -hmm. which I can't put a price on because fiction is priceless. Priceless, yeah. Um, Personally, I would think the $300 package carries the best value, but that's just my personal opinion for those of us who've got a bit more money saved up for this. Rich people. And of course, of course, if you just want, if you just want the pack, go for the $50 level, you're getting $60 worth of value. So the pack, challenge coin, it's cool. Um, or even if you say you just want the old pack, you can go for the twenty dollar level. You get the old pack and a challenge coin. So, oh, it's not old. Even that you get. It, it's it, it's industry yeah. one. It's still out. It's not. It's, it's not out. It's not out of print. Slightly older compared to the clan one. Okay, it was done I, before I the clan pack. <laughs> yes, we're not we old. In we're industry. Damn pack. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, all of those levels. Um, Basically, read up what you want, especially how much you're willing to spend. And all of them are decent value. Some of them are better than others. The real meat is in the $1,000 and $5,000 level. At that point, you're going to be invited to one of the strategy meetings for Battletech, which is a really cool reward. You get to at least listen in on all of the Battletech offers and line developers deciding where to take the franchise next. Yeah, that would be interesting to go check out, actually. That's so really the cool. mega lord nerd who wants to 
uh, you know, just be, c- c- cut into every conversation and say, well, actually, I can't. <laughs> That'll be me. <laughs> That'll be me. Yeah. Oh, actually, hold on. Let's not do any more clan stuff. It has to be interfering now. That's it. No more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're going to be allowed to cut in, but you can take part. And I think that is really cool, especially for the $5,000 level. You're going to fly over to the headquarters and take part in a two day meeting live and in person. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool, actually. It's- Really cool. Also, the five thousand dollar level was originally uh, limited to five people, but because so many wanted, they've now upped it to twenty. Yeah, now it's like seven left. Yeah, and he... in the end, it will turn into some weird convention of the most big, wealthy people for this. Yes. <laughs> And they're all just running, like they all get their own little miniatures of their own OCs, and they can role play <laughs> battle tech with each other. <laughs> Now, now, my only concern that I have with this whole thing, with the uh, with how Chaos Game Labs is actually producing everything and making everything, is I want to see uh, I want to see normal like infantry and tanks, and then also individually done packs or or mechs. So if I wanted to buy four Warhammers, I don't want to have to buy four box sets of Warhammers. The four Warhammers inside a lance I'm making for some game or some scenario that I'm doing for my for my group or what have you. Yeah. Back in the day, they that, you know they used to do that. You could buy a single mech and build yeah, whatever you want to. Yeah, that question though that has been answered by Catalyst before. They specifically said they are not gonna do that anytime soon because it's financially just not viable. Yeah, for the foreseeable yeah. future, they're gonna stick with the lens packs. Well, well, yeah. what happens is you're gonna create a third market. So, so, so let's say if one a Warhammer, I mean, literally the the thing to do if these packs are twenty bucks a piece. I'll, you know, basically people can flip these and, and basically sell the Warhammer for 20 bucks and then you get the rest of three for free pretty much or sell them all for 20 bucks a piece. And then you create a third market, kind of like a, a mech black market type thing. And uh, yeah. so so that's what's going to happen. But yeah. I also want to see vehicles and troops and helicopters. And, you know, and I want to see those like inside the game because that's also part of Battletech, not just mechs. I mean, granted, ba- Battletech, you know, mechs and all that kind of stuff. But there's just also oodles and oodles of mechs and uh, or or like vehicles and troops and everything now my impression is a bit though this is um they're coming out the battletech tabletop they're coming out with a new set of rules the new set of model uh like it's it's the re they're sort of yeah. somewhat restarting the game they're giving it a new lick of paint yeah and that lick of paint is great oh yeah it looks beautiful um but obviously, the point is, if you're just starting up, you start with your front runners, which is the battle mechs, and you have to make the most economical packages, which is the yeah, the box sets, the collection set, the lance sets, and uh, these random one-off mechs. You know, just oh, get yeah. a random mech in a box. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not going to have everything. Oh no, <laughs> like I understand that. Like, it's not going to be fully consumer friendly. It's this is the start, and with great success can come, can come more success. Yeah, I I hope that I, I hope that does happen. And normally, like within business, though, you always have the the box set be cheaper, and then the 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 next steps like oh, I want to have these types of mechs, so that's twenty thirty bucks, you know that kind of thing. So they, you know, and so it cascades from there from people buying different types of thing, things throughout the mech, um, you know, throughout the Battletech universe. That's standard. You know, that's a standard business practice that most companies do, or or board games do. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I'm excited for the third market because I do want to get some additional mechs. Oh yeah. And during my lifetime, I have never seen BattleTech in store. Really? Um, mm-hmm. that should that should probably date me. Wow. Even the new one, I haven't seen it yet. So, the third market is all I know. So I don't have an issue with it, and I'm excited to check out the field market for this box set. It's probably going to be cool. Oh no, no, it, it, I'm very excited about the whole thing too. I, I mean, it's it's beautiful. They did a great job. They, they it's from a, a a reputable company like you know like you know, CGL. They're a great company. They've done very well in the past. They they actually have a great product that they're producing, and they're I mean I mean just by the Kickstarter alone, I mean amazing. And I know they're going to do good. That's just that's just a given. Uh, very good. Glad to see that this thing is uh, kicking off the ground quite well. That uh, uh, I was always sort of a little built off by the tabletop because of the old art and models and whatnot. And I'm glad that they're picking up to the more modern standard. Um, last thing is just um, this is though 
this Kickstarter page is a bit much. Yeah, yes. they needed some breakdown. <laughs> they, they needed some type of breakdown that most of the community did. They they broke down different things like here's what you get at star level, here's what you get at you know like uh, at yeah. merchant cast, and well, they needed something. So so yeah. what, what it, Bob it is needs some what, spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah, what Bob is diving right into is you need a spreadsheet, and those spreadsheets do exist, yeah. though not in a really accessible way. Um, yeah, I recommend you guys to go on the Kickstarter page and check out the comments. Granted, there's 5k of them, but it's uh, it occasionally gets reposted, and somewhere in here you should get a, a uh, docs.google.com spreadsheet link, which um, lists all of the stuff you can get at the different levels and basically allows you to manage the whole thing. If you want, I could put it on my thing. Like I'll I'll go ahead and um, do it for my yeah, sure, you know, sure. Google Docs type thing. So, so I'll, you know, I'll leave it in links please, down below. Please look below the yeah. video in the description, and all of the links are going to be in the description yeah. as per usual. But yeah, um, those spreadsheets are also giant because there's just so much stuff. So don't get overwhelmed and take a close look at it. And it is, you can figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not easy, but you can figure it out, and it's going to help you a lot. What are you most excited? They break on any. If they break on any of their promises, nobody will remember what they were <laughs> made because it's just all so complicated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's that's at least a concern again, just it's also complicated. Yeah. You know, there's more points of failure. What are you most excited about, like inside the um, uh, Kickstarter? Basically, like what single piece are you most excited oh, about? That is so hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, the Timberwolf looks absolutely stunning, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be honest, the first make that really caught my eye was the new Shadowcat model. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know why, but that Shadowcat just really caught my eye. And even though the Timberwolf is obviously the most beautiful one out of these, it's, that Shadowcat is still... One of the things that Oof. I'm most excited about is the... Uh, if I can find it here. God, I can't even find this thing now. Um, or is Explorer Corpse expansion map. And I would love to get a copy of that. Um, that would just be amazing to go check out because I love the Explorer Corpse. I love the like you know periphery, basically. Um, that's what I'm, uh, but it's at 1.25 like million. I don't know if we're going to reach that goal. Hopefully we will. Um, Probably. But uh, that's what I'm most excited about. I would love to see that map. Um, and then also the the um, the clan battle armor, you know, and the clan like and the kind of like elementals points. I thought that was a cool idea. I can't wait to see what they look like because right now it's just a drawing, but uh, uh, like a battle point be really cool to go check out. I, I think that's really neat. I mean, I'm not much of a tabletop guy, but the thing I would look most forward to is the novel. Because I like reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but the, the big star is going to be the new mech models, I think. Yeah, the, the cards you get, the dice you get. Oh, yeah. They're okay. They're, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's those new models I really like. And the just the, the look of the, the, the branding they're doing for the franchise is a lot better. Because that's the thing, at least if you uh, wanted to ever play Friends with Battletech, I don't really have many who actually would i don't know anyone in real life who plays the tabletop but if i was to try and get someone into it what you show what you show them first is you bring the box mm -hmm. with the artwork on the front and that needs to be good it doesn't it shouldn't look like you know it was, it was uh, drawn in the medieval times or you know 1980s or whatever <laughs> <laughs> and this more modern artwork is going to help sell them the game to them so uh, when's it? It'll be out March 2020. Estim estimated delivery. So guys, it might be delayed. Might something might happen. Who knows? Uh, according yeah. to this, you have 19 yep. days left uh, when this podcast comes out. And right now, it's 5,244, and it's at 1.12 million. So it's gonna be good, guys. Uh, tweet, yeah. retweet it if you guys can. Uh, get the word out. Uh, this is Catalyst Games Lab BattleTech. This is the new version of BattleTech. It's gonna be kicking. Yeah, specifically retweet and share on Facebook because there are co some community missions which, once unlocked, will give us extra yeah, cool stuff. And maybe one thing to add, um, if you can't um, buy it within the next 19 days, uh, by the way, if you buy it, if you enter your amount now, um, you're only going to be charged in on April 18th, I think. That's the date I said. Oh, really? So um, you can plan ahead one month. And if that doesn't work out for you either, you can pledge the $1 to be a Comstar Monitor Station backer. So symbolic dollar. And you will get access to all of the add-ons and you will also get access to the backer. I don't know how it's officially called, but um, once the campaign ended, the pledge manager thingy 
at that point, you can still buy add-ons. So if you don't have the money right now, but you definitely want something, pledge one dollar and buy it later on. I did not know that. I might actually do that because right now I got to sell my plasma to get and get the box set. So, so this is good. This is really good. Okay. <laughs> If you need an infusion of cash, of course, refund Micro Five. Yes. And get yourself some Battletech models. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, maybe one thing to add because that is a major concern for many people: um, shipping. They are going to be shipping in waves, so you'll have to pay multiple times for shipping. At at, at least that's what we currently know. I, there's currently no option to say I'm going to wait until everything's done and only ship once. And also, shipping shipping centers. Or f- fulfillment centers are currently planned for the US, Canada, and Europe. And I believe there's one plan for Asia. So depending on your country, shipping may be quite expensive, just to keep in mind. All right. Well, uh, I mean, I had one thing I wanted to say just yeah. to wrap up the whole podcast in my mind, at least. I have a disapproving finger waggle at Epic Games for their uh, exclusivity, a disappointing finger waggle at PGI for their communication, and a thumbs up for uh, the Battletech uh, uh, Catalyst Games Lab with their oh, Battletech Kickstarter. God. Oh, that's a new thing the now. British that thumbs up. I have it a doesn't f- get much better than that. Exactly. I have a finger waggle at PGI for how dumb they are, and but a, a thumbs up for the game. And I have a thumbs up for the uh, CGL or the Cast Game Labs for how awesome of a Kickstarter they have done. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna say I love the Kickstarter. I'm so excited for it. I'm spending way too much money on this, and I'm gonna ignore all the negative things today. Hey? There you go. Welcome, <laughs> like you're growing up. <laughs> all right. Well, that was the uh, first second podcast episode ninety five thousand. See you guys later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Lark. Pew. Chicka, 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 bang, 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 chicka, chicka, coo. That'll do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>